You're listening to Boudoir Therapy, hosted by Darlene Wong. I fly over oceans in my sleep. Join me in my private boudoir where I raise the volume in the presence of coveted, feminine, and empowering business women I call the queens. I can't we just be? You are not living life if you are not living your inner art. So I have Sandra Lefebvre here from Style Sandra, and she is a fashion stylist. I'm so happy to have met her, not only because she's part Chinese like me, and it's New Year's Day today, Mm -hmm. but because... I think we have great connections, and she knows how to connect you with your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And I think and I believe that that can really help heal a lot of people when you just know what to put on. So I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to let Sandra introduce herself and her business and what is her inner art. Wow, thank you. That was beautifully said. I appreciate it. And I am so happy that I'm with you you are a dynamic woman. You are incredible. You are, you're going to change the world. Yes. yes, she says, yes. And talking about change, I'm going to change the way you see yourself when you look in the mirror. This is what this conversation is going to be all about. And it's, we're going to have the support of the master of the queen chair too, aren't Ooh. we? Style Sandra. And It's all about you waking up and feeling confident because it's just too easy, isn't it? Just to berate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, I look fat or I feel fat or this doesn't look good on me or I never know what to wear. I'm always buying the same things. And you have like a hundred pieces Uh, staring back at you. Right. But you're only wearing statistically (laughs) 20%. Mm -hmm. So it's sick. It's sick what you're spending. And people say, well, you know, stylists, that's only for the rich and the famous, honey. You're all rich and famous. You just don't know it. You're born rich and famous. We're all queens. We're all queens. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I mean, we all know the statistics to get here. It's 8 billion chances to get on this planet and you made it. You've already won the race. Wow. You have, right? You won. And people are like, no, I feel so terrible. I'm so... So, honey, you know, pull up your little panties and sit in that chair. All right. Right? I'll do it. I'll do it. So... Thank you. <laughs> So what's your inner, what is your inner art? My inner art, it's such a big question. It is. You know, so if we were just talking about what is my business or what is it about me, what is it you really want to know? Well, I find that when I ask this question, people also kind of step back and then they tell me a story. So why don't you tell me a story? Because your inner art is not necessarily one or the other. It's everything. It's who you are. Mm. So who are you really? Mm. Oh, boy. (laughs) Let me lie down for this one. (laughs) Who am I? I am. My inner art is really all about giving you what. Essentially, I was never given as a child, and that is that unconditional love, that support, and understanding that your body is a vessel that simply holds your soul, and why not dress up that vessel? Why not make it look so darn fantastic that when you step out, you know, I got goosebumps, you're stepping out and you're just like, I got this. Kaboom. You right. don't even need to convince me on that. <laughs> there you go. And and that's that's my inner art. My inner art is I want to give that to you. Because we're we all we all crave it, we all want it, and there are different ways for us to achieve it. And I believe that I have found this phenomenal way of just providing that to people, to allowing them to feel fantastic by giving them guidelines, by giving them the the encouragement, and I'm showing them. You know, what's that expression now? Uh, whatever you resist, it persists. Hmm. Well, the same thing with our body. And when you're hiding something on your body, we all see it because you've broken the rules of balance. Oh my gosh, I didn't see it that way. I was always considered to be very rebellious, but I never killed anyone. <laughs> I never really mm-hmm. hurt, uh, like intentionally someone. Right, right. I just didn't believe what you were telling me. And I believe that there was something else. That's all. That's all. That's all. So I, oh my gosh, thank you. Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, I want to, I want to, let's just turn the table and talk about her now. <laughs> Sorry, it's your turn today. <laughs> so listen, now that we know a little bit about your inner art and how it really is deeply mm. rooted in mm. what you believe mm. and what you want to share with the world, which is really, really generous and kind of you. I'm happy that you're... You're on the side that wants to share as opposed to the side that wants to be jealous because that's just, you can't grow on that side. So you are on the other side. You're not on the dark side, but we're here. We're on the bright side and it's sunny today. So it even helps the atmosphere. But now that I know a little bit about your inner art, Mm -hmm. what would you say or how would you describe success? Mm, You know... (laughs) Success, we all have this big vision of what success looks like, right? We all, we're all shaking our heads, yes, and that might be the big car, the big house, or, you know, the perfect partner. And I think success is really waking up every day. And I honestly feel this. I am so happy when I go, because I'm here. And I have the wrinkles to prove it. And I have the borle. I have the, you know, the, 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 the folds. And I have all that. And you know what? It's a privilege to have it. You know what? I think we should remind our guests to just breathe. Since you just did it right now, can we just do it together? Yeah, Yeah. like. And I'm happy. You know Mm. what? It's true. Success does come more from the internal as opposed to all these external materialistic Mm -hmm. things. Mm. Although we really want to adorn that vessel that we carry around with Mm -hmm. us and the Mm -hmm. queen's chair that I love to sit on. But Mm -hmm. that is just a way of us saying how much we value Mm -hmm. what we have, Mm -hmm. what we own, Mm -hmm. and what we believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You agree with all that? I really, really, really agree. And I think it's such a perfect fitting to sit in your queen's chair (laughs) and just, all right, let's bring in the good and let's release the bad, (gasps) right? Amazing. Amazing. And we just got to keep on remembering doing that. We need people like you. <laughs> and you. Yes. And you out there, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there an aha moment that you realize this is what you're supposed to be doing? You're supposed mm. to be helping people mm. get dressed and mm. feeling confident as mm. soon as they wake up in the morning? Mm. Mm. Um, yes to the aha uh-huh and yes. Because why? I once read a long time ago that um, whatever interests you from the ages of seven to 14, it's probably your gift. Uh. And it's probably what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. I'm going to repeat it. So from the ages seven, 14, whatever you were playing with, whatever you were interested in, this is probably what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. And it's statistically proven. No way. Way. When I talk to people every single client, I always ask them, tell me, you know, we're having a coffee or taking a break or they're in the changing room and it's very an environment where I can catch them off guard because I want to know who you are. And it's amazing. 9.5 on 10. It's always been the same. It's always been the same. Well, there's your other super royal power. You know exactly how to go back in time into someone's life (laughs) and then they just pretty much tell you and then you just reflect it right back onto them Mm. amazing Amazing. you're so good (laughs) okay either way there's the process that happens but we always get Mm. stuck somehow Mm. and I find I have like these little things on my shoulders called um, guilt and doubt and Mm. fear Mm. how do you manage Mm. when one of those come into into Mm. into play uh, last week, um, I was interviewed by a woman who's written a book about stress, about how to handle it. And she just asked me that exact same question. And I think the bottom line is you need to change your mind rules. Hmm. We are in control of what we think. If you're thinking, I'm not sure this is going to work. I'm not very smart. You know, write those down. And now find the alternative sentence you're starting to replace it with. Uh-huh. Replace it. And that's exactly what I do. I don't remember all my doubts because I replace it so darn fast. Uh-huh. It's automatic. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. my gosh. Uh, whatever the thought's going to be. I can't even think of one right now. Uh-huh. Oh, and I change it. I change that mind rule. I am not allowing myself 
to be pulled down, I am not, furthermore, going to allow myself to pull myself down. How? So, so wait, so for example, I'll give you an example mm-hmm. then, uh, hypothetically, you have a client that you're meeting for the first time and you happen to know that this is a celebrity coming in mm-hmm. and you're panicking. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do right mm-hmm. then and there? You know, you're telling yourself, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do the best. Like, I mean, this mm-hmm. person has everyone in Hollywood taking care of them and they're mm-hmm. here in Montreal. They obviously mm-hmm. need me, but how am I going to just pass through this little like devil on my shoulder yeah and i i i can put that instead of the hollywood famous person but a high ceo in montreal and yes there was stress and i would just this is what i was meant to do i am awesome at it i have the result this is not i'm not fabricating this you know what you're doing they called you and just repeat and just repeat And then suddenly I don't need to do it anymore because I've assimilated what I wanted my message to be for Sandra. Good for you, girl. <laughs> it's really hard. I mean, it's 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 it sounds easy to hear, mm. but when you're in it, it's mm. really difficult. And I find especially women, we are very emotional. And when there mm. is something that is very important to us, mm. that's when fear kicks in. Mm. I find it's the it I'll I'll be scared of something, you know, on a daily basis. But when it's really taking over me, mm. what I've told myself then in that immediate A moment is this must be really important Mm -hmm. and then I'm like okay I'll have a little glass of wine I think this Mm -hmm. I can do this I can Mm -hmm. do this and we we just go on (laughs) you know um the biggest word in the whole language I have one that I'm highly allergic to Uh uh-huh and that is try really yeah because you're holding out a pencil on your hand and you ask someone to try to take it, they are the either where they will or they won't. And that's my attitude for Sandra. Mm. I'm either going to do it or I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. And if I happen to screw up along the way, it's okay. Statistically shows, I am going to screw up. There's no way I can be 100%. There's mm-hmm. in, impossible. And I accept that. So when it happens, I've already accepted it. Mm-hmm. So it's It's okay. Let it go. Fix it. Well, what I've realized with time is that when I do make a mistake, it's because it's part of the process. Mm. And the more people see also, and you allow them to see Mm. that you made a mistake, the more they're going to realize, well, Mm. she's not going to make that mistake next time. And because, because if you start off just always being perfect or quote unquote perfect, then you don't end up learning or growing. Yes. And so I find there, you can tell from your work, it mm-hmm. just looks boring. Mm-hmm. It's true. Safe. Safe. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's better. Mm-hmm. It's boring too. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. <laughs> it is. And I mean, I made a big, my life sounds really perfect right now. I'm painting this beautiful picture, but realistically last year, someone who was, well-known, established, money, beautiful, told me, Sandra, this is the direction you should be going. Mm -hmm. And I changed my direction because Mm. I held this person up there as being smarter, better, knowing me more. Mm. And I listened to her. And you know what? It cost me six months of revenue. Mm. But however, the moment I realized it, I changed it. Next day, I got a phone call. It's 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 the universe. It's the universe. It is. I I totally get it because mm-hmm. and it's true. It takes just that second. Mm-hmm. It could be a text. Mm-hmm. It could be just the wind blowing in your hair, and you're just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's all I had to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So yes. I get it, and yeah. I really do believe in it, and the, and I believe how everything is connected. Not not only just the universe, the objects around you, the people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. It really helps a lot. It does. Just having someone negative around you constantly Mm -hmm. ends up, it it penetrates through my skin. Mm -hmm. And then those, their affection or their emotions end up becoming my emotions. Mm -hmm. And then I don't even have my own. And and then you end up getting lost. And, you Mm -hmm. know, it can go Mm -hmm. get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then... All I got to do is just Mm -hmm. remember who I am. Think of Sandra. Put on something real (laughs) nice. (laughs) No, no. You sit in your queen's chair. Oh, yes. No, no. That that, Really? (laughs) That is so much more powerful. You sit in your queen's chair, the one that you know that fits your body (gasps) to a T, and you just... 
you just bring it in because this is your domain. Yeah. Right? And this is yours. You own it. Um, can you explain to me a bit about your queen-like business? Just in a few words. I know we've spoken about mm. it a bit, but we went into more of um of an in-depth mm. and more emotional connection. Mm. Back up. There's one thing that's really important. And that is I'll help I help you to create a style profile. When you're buying a house or you're buying a car or you're buying jewelry, you know what you want because you've set it up in your mind as a what profile that looks like. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. I do that with your style. Okay. And so what and that allows you to do is that when you're looking at clothes now, you're looking it through the through eyes of a process. Is this my style? And it's very clear for you because we've worked on it. And so you say, yes, it matches everything you have. It's like a guideline. Now that you've worked on the person, you've worked closely with them, you've gotten to know them, you give them now a guideline so that every time they go and do more purchases for themselves, mm -hmm. they have like a template to mm -hmm. follow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do something similar with interior design and I... I make it really small little pieces that they can carry in their wallet mm. so that if they are, you know, out mm. and they see beautiful things, which you right. see all the time, you know, they take out their wallet, they take out these, these images, and then they see if it fits in mm. with it or not. Mm. And that's a good way for them to stop purchasing too much mm -hmm. um, and also returning mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, I agree. I totally agree. And yeah. that's the exact same thing. So when once we, we have that established, now we can move on and detoxing, removing what doesn't work for you anymore. I am constantly coaching you based on your body, based on your likes or dislikes, so that you can you know, present yourself in a way that is just phenomenally stunning the way you want to be. Yeah, I, I kind of liked how you used the word detoxing because I've never heard that with clothing. Mm. Can you just like explain that a little bit more? Mm. How do you detox with clothing? Um, well, I always ask everyone, put on your go-to outfit. We all have that go-to outfit. We don't know what to wear, but we always wear it, right? Uh -huh. Why? It doesn't mean because it looks great. It's because we just know how it fits and how it feels. Once they put that on, now I start asking them questions. What is it you like about it? And they tell me, what don't you like about it? And now that's a very interesting answer I'm starting to get. Most of the time people are wearing it not because they like it. It's because it's familiar. Okay. It's like an old pajama, right? Uh -huh. And so I go to the next item and I don't say anything. I go to the next item. And now we, I slowly start integrating ideas and planting ideas into them. And so they get to decide, wow, this really doesn't work for me. Uh -huh. So then I said, okay, so it's, there's the detox, get rid of it. Or there, there's the pile of let me think about it or I know I'm keeping it. Okay. And so there's three different piles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, it sounds like when you detox from your from your wardrobe, you end up losing weight too. Mm -hmm. Does it does is it like that? It, exactly. <laughs> yes. Losing weight, but also it's so funny, you're actually losing a lot of visual weight. Uh-huh. Because most people just don't know how to wear their clothes and they're overcompensating, and now suddenly they've gained all this visual weight. So I really help you to get, uh, to lose that visual weight. And the feedback I always always get is um everybody thinks I lost weight <laughs> you see that's why that's why I'm like it kind of sounds like that mm. it's a real it's organizing your mm. life mm. but literally around mm. your body mm. 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 which we we do we do forget a lot of times I'm really happy that you're here I'm happy that you do what you do. Thank you. Because I don't think people realize how important it is sometimes mm. for us to just take the time to feel good about ourselves. Mm. And uh, instead of, you know, comparing uh, with others mm -hmm. or whatever we're exposed to, it's, mm -hmm. it's really finding out something that's completely custom mm -hmm. just for you. So it is a very nice gift that you have. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Now, Sandra, I almost forgot your name for a second. <laughs> Just think of the gun. Cut. <laughs> okay, let me, let me cough then. Sandra, mm. do you own a queen's chair? That's a trick question. I don't. I do not own a queen's chair. Um, 
I don't. I have this beautiful chair at home I use to read in, but do I have a queen's chair? No. I am always, I'm a runner, I'm a mover, I'm a shaker, and the thought of actually sitting still <gasps> is hard to imagine. And I don't watch TV. It just, I just, when I sit down, it's because I'm reading and I don't have a queen's chair. I never, you know, like dawned on me to get a queen's chair. And it's so personal for me. It's not for everybody. I'm because I got this big private side to me. And where would I put it? Somewhere that I want it just for me. Right. Nobody climbing on it or nobody touching it. Don't move the pillow. You know, (laughs) I like the pillow like that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very, it's a very personal thing. I mean, if I had a big wardrobe, I think I may have put it in there only because I love clothes, right? Mm -hmm. But I would, I would love, I would, I love the idea and I want a queen's chair. It's got to be something I really want, like to design it, to really, Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not putting a Band-Aid. I'm not going to Zara to pick up a queen's chair. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So maybe your kind of queen's chair deserves to be in your huge walk-in closet Mm -hmm. in the middle of all of your work Mm -hmm. and your personality, Mm -hmm. right in the middle. So Mm -hmm. it could be even with something with a low back or an Mm -hmm. ottoman. Like a poof, mm-hmm. you know, something that's mm-hmm. easy to put your makeup on and to mm-hmm. get dressed and put your nice shoes on. Mm. What does that sound like? That sounds beautiful. It does. It does. And you know what? Mm. I, I can, I, when I did my queen's chair, I didn't really use her right away uh, because I am also very hyperactive. I don't tend to sit much. Mm. I have such a busy mind Mm. that I'm always constantly listening to it and creating. Mm. That's what it's telling me to do. Make that, darling. Make that. What about this? Do you have this glue? Do you have that tape? Yes, I do. And then I keep going. And then sometimes when I'm so, so busy and running around here like a crazy lady, I look at her, my queen's chair, and I'm like, okay, okay, I'll come sit down. Mm. So I've actually... Mm learn to use her by listening to her mm-hmm. as opposed to which is the reason I built her in the first place was so that I could sit on her all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't really sit on her all the time. But when things are a mess and it's running, I go and sit down because she tells me to. Yeah. And it feels really good. I, I, yes. I love it. I love the idea that it's not just a chair for every day. Mm-hmm. I love the idea it's, it's a sanctuary. I love the idea that she knows. Mm-hmm. She knows, and she's like, she's becking, you know, like, come, <laughs> yes. come here. She's you know? so comfortable, and yeah. she's so soft. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, my last question to you, what do you deserve in life, and how will you make that happen in 2019? <sighs> well, and I mean this with full hu- humility, but I deserve everything and I will get everything. And it might not be at this very instant sitting in this, you know, beautiful office and this, you know, with your and with you in front of me, but I will get everything and I deserve it because it's not because I'm selfish, it's because there's so much around us that there is enough for everybody. And we just believe it and repeat it. And it will be. And mine is here. I get whatever I want. So, and what does that look like? Okay, it looks like uh, a book, starting a book. Um, It's going to be on the top seller list. Of course. Of course. (laughs) Uh, Buying a pied à terre somewhere beside (gasps) the ocean. Yes. Yes. Uh, (laughs) Yes. Yes. Um, But, you know, um. Also, um, with all of these riches, it's also giving back. So I'm now volunteering at the YWCA downtown for women. Um, because if I have all this, I need to share it. And the more I share, the more that people get to benefit from everything, all of my money and all of my riches. So it's an incredible year. This is an incredible year. Everything is, it is. It's so incredible. Thank it's you. It's the year of the pig. So we're going only for gold. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sandra, do you have any questions for me? Yes. Um, I find that your queen's chair is so inspiring. And I want to know, when you were building this, who do you have in mind? 
Hmm. I don't think I really thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of what I've come into uh, into realization has happened about by accident. Um, and although I've always been uh, a creative enthusiast and in my interior design and in my arts, I bought the chair. It's a, it's a vintage chair from the 80s uh, from Italy and it's hand carved, but I didn't know what I was going to do with her until someone else actually told me, you know what, that's your chair. And from there came about my 21 collections and the boudoir collection mm. and my poofs and then the custom mm. queen chairs. So I don't know how to exactly answer your question, but it's it, it's something that came really from inside mm -hmm. without me knowing it until mm -hmm. I put it out there and then it reflected back to me because her name is Maleficent and uh, she's part of, the, she's the Maleficent uh, fabric collection that I have. And we all know Maleficent as the, the Disney um, character, the evil witch um, who is mm -hmm. pretty much jealous mm -hmm. of everything that is happening and the beauty of this other younger woman mm. who she feels is taking over. But I think it's just someone who is really misunderstood mm. and uh, within herself and her entourage. And I wanted to kind of create that for myself. And at the same time, I did adorn her with uh, yellow lotuses, which is my Chinese name. And I said, that's actually just me. Mm. Like, I'm just a mix of beautiful and black, and I, I'm i okay with it now. Wow. So I'm not sure if it really, really answers, because it's very new to me to the process, but I know that whatever that's giving me, mm. it's real. it has given me a lot more confidence and power to go ahead and expose what it is that I do and what I belie believe mm. in hopes that it'll also inspire others to go ahead and try doing their, you know, whatever ideas or dreams they've always had, whether they know what they are mm -hmm. or not. It's just, you just have to try doing something mm -hmm. and then something else is going to come out of it. Mm -hmm. You just don't know until you try. Yep. So I'm really happy with how this turned out for me. And then this is where this show comes up, the boudoir therapy, where I found I had a lot of really good connections with people such as yourself who um, not only support what I'm doing, but are like-minded mm. and are go-getters and they're doing it their way. And I said, wow, I can do it too. Like, mm. I'm just going to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. No. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And I, I, I see that your chair is really a symbol of your um, raising from the ashes. And it, it helped you when you needed you. You mm -hmm. needed her or she needed you. There's a relationship there, right? I think so. I think so. I think maybe so. that's your market, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, maybe that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I feel like I've been, I guess, lacking respect. So there is a lot of symbolism mm -hmm. with the whole mm -hmm. idea of the throne. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it has nothing against, uh, again, to do with I want... I want in a selfish manner mm. is more like I deserve it because mm. I've just I just came out of the ground like mm -hmm. I just came out of the dirt mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and you. I'm 36 years old mm. and now I'm finally like breathing some fresh air because I'm just listening to myself mm. whatever language that is mm. Sandra could you tell everyone where we can find you online go to the tab where it says book online or my phone number's there, my email address. I won't clutter the space with all that information. Just go style Sandra, one word, dot com, and I'm there. Okay. And um, you offer, I saw on your site that you offer a consultation, a free mm -hmm. consultation. Mm -hmm. so how does that work? You book um, from your home. You book uh, what time and date that's good for you. And we're 20 minutes conversation. And it's a really, and there I give you solutions. And by the time you get off the phone, you know, A, what to do, and B, you might even got some nice tips too. Okay. You know? Oh, fantastic. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thank and you. thank you for being on my show. Mm. And this year is going to be a good year.
Oh, awesome yes. year. Phenomenal yes. year. And thank you very much. And it's fantastic getting to know you too. Thank you. The little person inside, you know? <laughs> and we had a great talk. We did. We really did. This is like this one is of the like best fun. talks. This that is was, fun. It was fun. So <laughs> yeah. thank you. Thank you. I fly over oceans and my sleep. If you enjoyed the voice of boudoir therapy, please leave your review on iTunes. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And every Tuesday is Social Tuesday. I'll be active on social media if you have any questions. And don't forget the full moon special. Listen in a little bit closer to my story. Want to personalize your boudoir therapy experience? Visit www.darlenewong.com under DW Boutique to purchase your copy of Boudoir Therapy, a self-deserving journal made by me just for you. And never, never stop living your inner art. Because you deserve it.